The holiday season can be a very stressful time of year. And, and if you're away from family, friends, or you've recently had a breakup, a divorce, oh, Christmas can be a sad time. And if you have perfectionistic tendencies or you try to please everybody, you love my little doggy, <laughs> that's Yoda, um, it can be a real challenge. And I, being a, a mother and with my kids all in another state, I've had many Christmases that, that were challenging and sad, but it doesn't have to be that way. So I am doing a podcast tonight to help people overcome that sadness, uh, that loneliness, even if you are, um, yeah, if, if you have family that's unhealthy, that's another sad thing. And, and you know, maybe when you go to visit family, <laughs> um, there could be a, a lot of behaviors that happen that, that are really uncomfortable and um, you know can be a challenge so whether you're with your family or without your family um, the reason I'm doing this podcast is to help people to navigate the holiday season um, you know in in the most positive way and I just sat and, and did a channeling for uh, my message for this podcast so um, that I would you know, be on, on track with what everybody's experiencing. So um, I'm really open to hearing from you what the challenges are. So someone says that Christmas is sad. This is Roseanne said Christmas is sad for her because her family's unhealthy. And, you know, that's, that's a serious issue. Um, and, and it could be your own children maybe that are unhealthy or the behaviors are unhealthy. So um, I, on this, this little video here, um, I'd love to hear um, what you have, you know, going on. Hi, Ellen. Ellen's in Scotland. Um, and Christmas in different in different countries can be different. I I spent Christmas in England one year, and being far away from family and friends can be a real challenge. Uh, but there are ways to navigate this time, and um, I'm I'm just going to give you a few. A few hints um, right now, but I'd love for you to join me tonight at 5.30 Pacific, and that's 8.30 Eastern. I'm doing a free podcast. I'll be posting the link. Actually, I think I can post the link right now. Let's see. There it is. So there's the link to the podcast tonight. Um, so it, just in the interim, some things that you can do. Uh, one is don't be caught up in the melee because you know you could go out to the shopping mall and and you could and thank you for the love everybody you could go to the shopping mall and you could see people spending lots and lots of money that is beyond your comfort zone and so if you have a budget in mind write it down write a list Find out what people want. You still have time to shop online. You can save a lot of money if you have Amazon Prime. You'll get free shipping. Uh, you can find things at great deals. You know that you know don't cost a lot, but are thoughtful just the same. Or you could do what I've done. I made apricot jam earlier this year, and shh, don't tell my kids, but they're all getting apricot jam for Christmas. It's homemade. It's organic. It's something that. You know, I made from the heart. So giving a gift from the heart, something that you've made yourself, it could be cookies, it could be um, bread, it could be, you know, a Christmas cake. I mean, people still eat that. Um, there's a lot of different ways that we can cut down on the expense and do things to prepare in advance. Okay, so, so typically I'm going to tell you some bad behaviors that I've had in the past. And, and maybe you can relate. So I'll go shopping, and I'll spend what I had planned to spend. And I put the stuff in a closet. And, you know, when my kids were home, I used to hide it. I don't have to do that anymore. But I would put the stuff in the closet, and I wouldn't wrap it. 
And then come Christmas Eve, what am I doing? Every Christmas Eve, I'm wrapping presents instead of having time and fun with everyone else. So instead of doing that, as you buy a present, take some time and wrap it right now. And I'm listening to my own advice. <laughs> So that's what my behavior is that I'm going to change this year is I am going to stay to my budget because I'm traveling and that costs money too. And so, you know, the thing is, is that you're giving the gift of presence being with your family, if you're with your family or with your loved ones. And live in the moment, savor each moment instead of rushing through it. Um, I'm driving to Colorado. It's almost an 1,100-mile drive. And over the past month, because I wasn't sure if I was going to be there for Christmas, I have been having visions of the trip. And living in California, I drive through, I have to think about this backwards, I drive through, um, you know, the desert of California going northeast, and then I go into Nevada, go through Vegas, and um, then next thing you know, I'm going through Arizona, which is beautiful. And then Utah, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you all a geography lesson here. And, you know, there's hundreds of miles that I drive where there's nothing. And the interesting thing about it is I'm not in a rush to get there. It's my guides were talking to me this morning. It's not about the destination. It's about the moment-by-moment moment savoring of everything. You know, if you're eating pie, savor that pie. Take one bite at a time. Let the flavor roll in your mouth. Enjoy it. Breathe it in. Close your eyes. Revel in the moment rather than rushing through each experience, whether you're alone or whether you're with other people, savor each moment because, you know, this is, I just channeled this, if you're rushing to the destination, you're basically rushing to die because that's the final destination. And we don't want to do that. We want to enjoy the moment, enjoy the living, Enjoy the wonder. And the way we do that is that using life as a meditation, breathing deeply through each moment instead of rushing to get to the end. And even when there are challenges with our family, think about what is the highest and best thing that I could say in the moment. Do I need to be browbeating or criticizing? Or what is the most loving thing that I could contribute in this moment? Maybe if you've been watching the program The Royals on Netflix like I have, Queen Elizabeth <laughs> has learned to be silent. And that is her job, to not do anything. Can you imagine? All her life she's been trained to be silent and do nothing. And that is the highest and best in any situation. And I see that as a wonderful, uh, a really wonderful teaching because so often we think people need to hear from us that we need to say something when really all we need to do is be there. Just be. Be present. Sometimes, <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little secret, sometimes, because I'm a pretty intense person, you know, I've got five planets in Scorpio. I am, you know, I'm, I'm a big energy person. I had a friend in, in North Georgia that used to say to me, uh, Jennifer, I always know when you've arrived because 30 minutes before you show up, your energy's here. So I, I'm pretty intense as a, as a being. And so when I visit my kids, I have to really zip it. And sometimes that takes a lot of effort. You know, because I, I teach, you know, I, I have a lot of wisdom, but, you know, my kids don't want to be hearing it in every moment. So acceptance can sometimes just be silence, smiling. I had a, um, a therapist in Georgia when I was um, 
going to therapy with an ex-husband for my daughter. And he had this sign on the wall. Probably the most profound thing I ever got out of any PhD's office. And basically, it is that, you know, everyone has to be their own uh, validator. You know, they have to give their themselves the validation. And what do we do for others? There's three things that we can say. Wow. Congratulations. Oh, bummer. And if we stay with those three things, we'll never go wrong because we're not criticizing, we're not causing anyone to feel bad about what they're doing or saying. So if we can remember to keep our comments to a minimum and remember to keep love in our hearts. Okay, let's see. Hi, Ron. How are you? Oh, Yes, yes. I, hi, Roseanne. Uh, she said she'd never known uh, that I was a Scorpio. Well, um, I've done a heck of a lot of work <laughs> on this, this body-mind, uh, lots and lots of work. And, uh, yeah, I've, I've learned to really temper who I am, you know, much more loving. I used to, I used to swing a baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing that less and less. Okay, so let me see. Um, does anybody have a question about anything? So tonight, it's an hour long, and if you have questions, you can send me... Um, what happens with Geminis? Oh, Geminis. Well, I have two of those, actually, in my family, two Geminis. Um, you know, Geminis around the full moon were, were really challenged. Um, you know, but here we are in this Mercury retrograde, and I just want to say, you know, Mercury retrograde is a time where we're looking into the darkness, looking into the shadow material that we have, looking into the past. And that's one of the things that I'm doing on this podcast. You like this light shining my face. Um, in this podcast, we're going to be taking a little sleigh ride. I, I have this little meditation that's going to feel really good. I'm doing an energy clearing on my podcast, so I really do hope that you will join me. And I'm also doing a drawing. So if you're interested in putting your name in the hat for the drawing, I really would appreciate it if you would send me an email at jenniferelizabethmasters at gmail.com, and I'll put your name in the hat. I am giving away... I was originally going to be giving away one, but apparently I'm giving away three um, of my Happiness Jumpstart audio. It was actually uh, done about two years ago, and I think you're going to find it really powerful because not only does it help you with what to do to be happy, it's also what not to do that's causing you to be unhappy, and then... It teaches you how to be in the flow state. And, you know, when we're in the flow state, that's where, that's where I am when I'm writing my books. I'm in that flow state, channeling, um, hopefully channeling grace and love and, and wisdom and all that wonderful stuff um, so that everyone will benefit. And I don't know about you, but I'm getting hungry. All this talk about holidays and Christmas and I'm thinking about pie with whipped cream, you know, my favorite <laughs> my favorite breakfast food. Um, uh, so how to have joy at, at the Christmas holiday or Hanukkah holiday when, you know, maybe you've had a history of a lot of sadness or, or maybe you've lost loved ones and you miss them. So I'm, I'm going to be doing some clearings that will help you all feel better, feel more positive. Okay. I am sure, Roseanne, you've done lots of work. <laughs> okay. Um, so a couple of tips just to help you with, with the holidays. Um, the dollar store, the 99 cent store, is an amazing place to buy gift wrap, to buy bags to put Christmas presents in, and even cards. And um, you can certainly cut down on your expenses by, by buying and shopping there. Um, 
let's see, the other thing is that when you know you're going to be very busy, you know, and you know you've got days like that, put a pot of vegetable soup on. Make homemade soup so that you don't have to cook you know, when you've got too much going on. And when you are cooking for a crowd, try and do uh, meals that you can put in a, a one dish with everything together that, you know, makes a beautiful aroma in your home and everything's put in that like a crock pot or a, a roasting thing. Um, I used to cook brisket. Um, I had some friends in Maryland teach me how to make brisket, and so I would put potatoes and carrots and um, a cream of mushroom soup and onion soup mix. This was an old recipe that this lovely lady gave me back in Maryland, and you just stick it all in the oven on a low temperature, and it takes about three hours, and it's amazing. Everything's all done together, so that would be a great, easy meal to do. Okay, so... Uh, a couple of tips, like I promised before I go. Watch movies that will make you laugh, smile, and conjure up happy memories. And I am going to list a couple of my favorites. Uh, Scrooged with Bill Murray is one of my favorites. Elf, um, Jim Carrey's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, um, and you know the, the other original is a really good one. I love the movie Home for the Holidays with Holly Hunter. Uh, that is a really good one. And then there's another one, too, with, um, I have to think about this one for a moment, uh, where the, the two women uh, share, they, they, one takes over the, I'm trying to think of what that one is called. The, I think it's like The Holiday, maybe it is. Um, that's another great movie where it's set partially in Los Angeles and this beautiful uh, location, and then you go to England. At, at great romance. I love that movie, and it's pretty funny, too. Uh, let's see what else. Funny movies. Oh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Okay, you know, maybe it's stupid, but i got to say, it is my family's, uh, hands down, favorite movie. We quote many of the lines from that movie, and it is always a crowd Please do. The holiday. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Roseanne. <laughs> okay, so one, two, three. So what I'd like you all to do with me while we're all together, and we are all together. So across time, space, and all reality, take a deep breath with me, if you would. Just close your eyes. And as you do, take a nice deep breath, filling your lungs all the way to the top. Drop your shoulders because they're up around your ears. Dropping your shoulders, exhaling. Exhale completely and slowly. Take another deep breath. And as you exhale this time, envision the flame in your heart growing stronger, exhaling, igniting the flame in your heart, exhaling completely. Another deep breath, dropping your shoulders again, breathing in completely. And as you exhale, igniting that flame a little further. Okay, so now what did that just do? couple of things that a deep breath does. It will align you with your high self. It will align you with your God presence. It will bring you into the present, and it will help to ground you. So one of the things that I've noticed that most of my clients do, they don't breathe deeply, and a deep inhalation will affirm life. It's very important. Let's do that one more time. Take one more deep breath together. And this time, as we exhale, let go of all that doesn't serve you. Let go of all the sadness, all the grief, all the sorrow, and breathe in, breathe in love.
I love you. So thank you so much for being here with me. I hope that you'll join me tonight at 5.30 Pacific, 8.30 Eastern, and you will definitely get a big dose of love and joy. You won't even have to wear any protection. And I mean that in the truest sense. You won't have to protect yourself. So I hope you'll join me tonight. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for sharing your light with me. Hi, Jim Bear. Sending you all love. Thank you so much. And please do share this with your friends. Um, I, again, I'm just going to remind you, I'm giving away three, count them three, three, um, of my Happiness Jumpstart audio programs. And this stuff is, it's a very high energy program. So put your name in the hat by sending me an email and join me tonight for my podcast. I love you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank uh-huh.